Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have an interesting scenario where we're playing 60,000 deep. A player limps from early position and I get pocket sixes in the hijack seat. Um, notice we have a deep stack, very splashy to our left, and then a very shallow stack on the button. So kind of an interesting table setup. Usually you don't have a 100 big blind stack and then a 10 big blind stack hanging around, but sometimes that's how it goes. Uh, so with the sixes, this is a spot where very often I'm just going to limp. Some portion of the time I'll raise, especially if I think the limper is very weak and I really want to play in position against him. If the players in the blinds are very good, I'm going to be way more inclined to raise because that's going to make the good players fold, which is usually a good result. Um, same thing if the player on the button's good. So I'm going to raise this some portion of the time and call some portion of the time. I think you can go either way. If you raise in this spot... I think that's usually going to make this splashy, aggressive player less likely to re-raise. Whereas if I limp, I think the splashy player is very often going to raise. And that's not really what I want. So I think re-raising is going to be a better result for me. Or raising is going to be a better result. I do make it 3,800. And now, all hell breaks loose. The cutoff calls. And then the short stack goes all in. All right. So now it's going to fold back around to me. And I have to figure out... If I call, will the splashy aggressive guy call or re-raise? And it's tough to say, but I imagine he's probably going to call a lot of the time because I think his range is probably somewhat capped at good but non-nut hands. Like, I don't think he's going to be sitting here with ace-king or pocket kings too often. He's going to have more hands like ace-jack or pocket sevens. So if I re-raise, will hands like ace-jack or pocket sevens fold? Remember, he has 3,800 in. So I think if I make it something like 20,000, I imagine he's going to fold out a lot of those hands that are doing pretty good against me. Whereas if I call, he's going to clearly call 6,000 more in position into a pot that's going to be 30-something, right? So this is a spot where I think re-raising makes a lot of sense. We're going to make a lot of better hands fold. We're going to clean up our equity, and we're going to typically just realize our equity better because we're going to be heads up and instead, instead of um, you know playing multi-way out of position. You don't really want to be multi-way out of position against... A deep stack. So I like re-raise. I'm probably gonna make it about 20. I make it 21. And now he calls. Oh boy. When he calls, what kind of range do we think he has? Most likely he has hands near the top of his calling range. So I think this is gonna be stuff like ace queen. Well, his preflop calling range is my 3,800, right? Because he put in 3,800 and then 21,000. So he must have something pretty good. Unless he's just horrible. And maybe he is horrible. It's tough to know when you review hands, like how bad a generic splashy slash aggressive player is. Like maybe he has 10-9 suited or 6-5 suited for all I know. But most likely, I think if you're against a reasonable player in the spot, they're going to have a lot of ace-queens, maybe ace-jack suiteds, maybe king-queen suited, and then hands like 10s, 9s, and 8s. So I think that's what we're going to be against a lot of the time. So against that range, what should I do here? Well, clearly if he has a king, he's never folding. If he has ace-queen and I check, will he bet? And I don't know. It's tough to know. He's a splashy, aggressive player, right? So I think in this spot, I probably want to bet small, mostly for protection. And also, our opponent may randomly fold out pocket sevens or pocket eights. I don't think that'd be a good fold, but maybe he would. It's tough to really predict what people are going to do in spots like this, just because they're now getting you know, way out of the realm of normal poker hand, no, normal poker situations. So I think I like a small bet. I would definitely like to bet small with my whole range in general here. Remember, there is a side pot. It's not so clear in the replayer, but 30,000 of the chips are heads up. I'm sorry, 30,000 of the chips are multi-way and 25,000 of the chips are heads up. So if I can bet something like 10,000 and pick up the pot ever, that's a pretty good success. So I, there we go, bet 15,500 and he calls. I think looking back, I would prefer maybe even a smaller bet, but 15 is fine. When I do bet 15,000 and the opponent calls, gosh, I'm probably just done with this hand. I'm not going to run a bluff and try to get him to fold out tens or jacks or nines if he has a king he should also just call the flop in which case you know, clearly bluffing is not going to work against that so i don't like this spot our, our flop bet likely got us a little bit of protection but beyond that 
I think we're pretty unhappy. Obviously, you have to be careful making bets where if you bet and get called, you're unhappy. But remember, our flop bet was actually very small, 15,000, which doesn't sound that small, but 15 into a 55,000 pot is actually not that much. So I'm not going to say it's like we checked because 15,000 is 20 big blinds, but I think it cheaply gets us the protection we need. I know betting for protection often isn't such a great strategy in No Limit Hold'em, but whenever you can make a small bet and get protection, it's usually well worth it. So anyway, I'm done with this hand until, oh, hello, I get a six on the turn. So now, should I bet or should I check? Well, if the opponent does have pocket tens or pocket jacks, what is he going to do if I bet? I think on this obviously scary turn, he's probably going to fold, which would be pretty bad. Which makes me think, actually, should I be bluffing on something like the Four of Diamonds or the Seven of Diamonds? And maybe I should. I don't know. I, I certainly didn't plan on it. But I do think that our opponent's going to fold some portion of the time on this very scary turn. If he decided to float the flop with Ace-Queen or Ace-Jack, he's almost certainly going to fold unless he has the Diamond. So this is a spot where if I bet, I think we're going to get a lot of folds. But if I check, I force him to stay in the pot with everything. And pretty much everything he has is drawing dead or nearly dead. Because notice we don't have to worry about getting outdrawn unless he has exactly an overpair and that comes in and that's just not going to happen very often. So I definitely like checking. I'm going to check now. We don't need to bet. The pot's already gigantic. If it goes check, check, maybe our opponent will get suspicious on the river and look us up wider than he should. And if he bets the turn, clearly that's just great. So I do check and he goes all in. So we're obviously happy. We're calling. What should he go all in here with? I think he should probably go all in here mostly with good draws and kings. When he goes all in, what am I going to call him with? Well, I'm probably going to call him with kings, flushes, and big pairs. So how does his nines do against kings, flushes, and big pairs? Well, quite poorly, right? It's actually, he's pretty much dead. So I think this was a very, very, very bad turn bet by the opponent. You will see some players make these bets just because they have a hand like nines. They think, oh, I'm probably good at the moment. And they don't want to get outdrawn. But in this scenario... This is a very clear marginal made hand that if he bets and gets called, he's going to be beat every time. And now, as opposed to when I was making that small bet on the flop for protection, our opponent's risking his whole stack. And I don't actually think he's going to get very much protection because when I'm checking, I'm going to be checking at least somewhat balanced. I mean, we see here, I check the nuts, right? Um, I'm going to be checking somewhat balanced where I can easily call off some portion of the time. So I definitely don't like this play by the opponent. I think he pretty much butchered this hand. What should he have done differently, though? So initially pre-flop, it went limp, 3,800. I think his call's fine. When this guy jams, it's a bit unfortunate, especially when I make it 20K. When I make it 20K, I think he should actually just fold his nines. I understand that he has the best hand at this point, and if he knew what I had, clearly he would never fold. But you don't know what your opponents have. So whenever I make it 20K, I think I'm going to have a lot of probably hands like fives and better. So he's you know, slightly behind that. And then I'm going to have a lot of big uh, big cards, in which case he's flipping. So he's going to be roughly flipping from in position, which is fine. But my range is going to be very, very disguised and difficult to play against. Because he's not going to know if I have the small pairs, big pairs, or over cards. And he also doesn't know what over cards are going to come. And in that spot, I think it's probably best just to sidestep this whole situation. Uh, but yeah, once he gets to the flop, I think his flop call's fine. But on the turn, he definitely needs to check. By going all in, he is going to force me to play perfectly. You never want to make your opponents play perfectly because you make money when they make mistakes, not when they play perfectly. So that's going to be it for this hand for PokerNews.com. If you enjoy these videos, definitely tell them on Twitter at PokerNews. If you like this kind of thing, share it with your friends. It might They might enjoy it too. So thank you very much for being here. This has been Jonathan Little, and I will talk to you next week.